Western Michigan man. Darius Jackson on the carry. Solomon Thomas there on the tackle. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. On second down, here's gone. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Throwing on third. Gone. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Flush to his right. Looking to set for once, and it's intercepted. He's picked off near his own 48. To the end zone, a pick six for the 49er D as they score the touchdown. Gold to add the extra point. Gold with the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Rams getting set to go now. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. And that's complete to Cooks. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Goff wants to throw on third and one. And got him in. It's Woods. His first catch of this wild card game, and it's good for a first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn it into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Go off throwing again. Going up top. And it's knocked away and incomplete. The Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, there defensively to make the play. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not force that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Again, golf. Going up top for Cup. And incomplete. A disappointing drop there defensively by the rookie. And now fourth down. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball He's way better than what we're saying. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. There are the 49ers getting set to trot out there. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. 
You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. No gain on the play there. Second down. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he finds some space, past the 25 to the 27. Well, that second down run, a big help. The seven yards leaves him with just a third and three now. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Garoppolo going to try and throw on third. He's got the first down and more past the 40. 23 yards on the play. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Here's McKenna. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Georgia Southern man, it's Matt Breida. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Well, they need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. He completes it to Bryant. And he's brought down. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive the team towards a victory. He'll get it up the middle. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle, and he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let them know right away I'm throwing it, but I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity. If it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. Oh, and they had him step short of the first, but a penalty marker down. And that looked like a clear face mask to me. So the ball's moved to about the one after the penalty, first and goal. They'll try to run it with Morris. And he'll take this into the end zone for a San Francisco touchdown. Now 
Alfred Morris taking it in. And the 49ers add on to their lead. Gold able to tack on the extra point. And it's now 21 to nothing. Gold now out to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Solomon Thomas able to get him for a loss of about three. We said it before the game, and I think it's still apparent. If these guys are going to advance in these playoffs, they're going to have to wreak some havoc coming off the edge. Yeah, wild card round. They told us the wild card could be that defensive pressure. They showed it there. The throw on second down is gone. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And both guys were there, but it falls incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. A shotgun snap for goal. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Reuben Foster in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Predictably, at least somewhat predictably, it doesn't pay off. And now the football is going to go over, already being placed at the 15-yard line. This is Morris, and he'll take this one down near the 15. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. Here's Morris. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. here losing yardage back to the 16 it's a loss of a full three yards and it brings up fourth down Robbie Gold on now to try the field goal from the right hash this from 33 and Gold is able to put it through. And that stretches this lead even further. It's now 24 to nothing. 
The bottom line, tremendous starting field position really squandered there as they wind up going backwards and then come up with just three. Well, getting the three turned out to be important. I can imagine the head coach when he ordered the field goal, please salvage something out of this drive. That was not fun to watch. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three. But this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you happened there. you think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his three mind going three into three the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Jeremy Langford is in. He gets the carry. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Take this from the 40 up to the 45 for a gain of five. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Rams on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run it now out of the gun. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. This is the veteran fullback, John Kuhn. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They'll try the air now with Gaugh. He rifles one that's intercepted. It's the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. And he'll take this back all the way up past the 45-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10. Now McKinnon to start the drive. Oh, what a move. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back with more NFC playoff action after this. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Right back to him on first down. And he'll be stopped up quickly here. At the 38, just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. 
I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. just outside of the 30. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. And he will lose yardage back to the 34 yard line. And a loss of three to bring up four. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. So we come upon halftime here in this NFC wild card. There you have it. Halftime quickly over. Third quarter. Here we go. All right. Three. 